Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here. This is Dark, and today we're going to go over the basics of room creation on TryHackMe. So the first thing that you'll need to do is log into your TryHackMe account, and you can see that I'm here just at the dashboard. And next, we're actually going to have to enable the developer options on TryHackMe. By default, these aren't enabled just to limit a little bit of clutter in the dashboard. So in order to do that, we'll need to go over to the other tab and then go down to develop rooms. Now you'll notice here that we have this option here, the switch rather, of room developer options. Once you click on that, and note this might change in the future, we will have a developer icon or a developer tab rather that shows up here on the side. So we can go ahead and click back on the TryHackMe logo just to go back to our dashboard. And there we go, we have the develop tab. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple of the different areas in the develop tab. The first one here is going to be upload. So this one, if this bug shows for you, just reset upload. Otherwise, sometimes you have to log out of your account and log back in. Uh, this is for uploading your virtual machines or other material that you would use in your room. Now, keep in mind with rooms, they don't necessarily have to be public. Um, we'll get into the process of actually making these rooms public here in just a little bit, but you can upload things to use maybe for classes, uh, different cyber defense clubs or other groups that you might be active in here. In addition to that, uh, so you can see that we also accept the uploading of virtual machines in the OVA and the QCOW2 format. These are both very common formats. This is something that you can find within your VMware or VirtualBox export settings, the open virtualization archive format here. So with the uploading, we'll need to do a couple different things. First, we'll set a title and then we'll set a description here. The title is going to be the most important aspect. This is how you're going to be able to address your content uh, and grab it for use in your room. So in this specific case, we'll go ahead and ignore this for now. However, whenever you're making a room, you're probably gonna be adding something here. Now, the only other thing that we need to do is actually select what we want to upload. Now, depending on how big this is, Uploading it might take a little while. Something to be aware of is that you do need to be connected, of course, to the site the entire time that you're uploading. And if you're uploading a big machine that's, I don't know, 20 gigabytes or something, it's gonna take a while to upload that. If you're uploading something small like a worksheet, that's probably gonna take less than a minute. Uh, it, this can range pretty heavily depending on the speed of your internet connection. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, another thing to be aware of is the machine restrictions are down here below, so you'll notice that Windows is actually fairly unrestrictive, but depending on the type of virtual machine that you're trying to upload, you might encounter some issues, uh, specifically with the kernel version. This is actually a big issue that we see with AWS, so take a look down here before you actually go through and upload that. One other thing to note, we do support some advanced options here for SSH, RDP, or VNC via the browser. There are a couple rooms here on TryHackMe, mostly they're subscriber rooms, that allow you to actually upload a box or control the box rather in your browser via RDP. Very, very cool feature. If you do want to do that, just shoot us over a message and we can get this added in for you. So very fun to do that. All right. Once you get your whatever content you want uploading and you can start this and move on to something else, let's go ahead and move over to another section here, manage rooms. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is actually create our room. We're gonna go ahead and do that by clicking the create room link. We'll just name this test and then test for YouTube, please subscribe. And then we'll label it appropriately down here as either a challenge or a walkthrough. So when you're deciding between these, a challenge and a walkthrough have some different requirements for being made public. A challenge room is typically gonna be more of a CTF type room, a capture the flag type activity, wherein it's going to have less guidance, but we do require a walkthrough or write-up to be submitted. Uh, keep in mind that write-up link is going to be private, but in order to make it public, um, the actual room made public, we do need that uh, actual document. For a walkthrough room, that could be explaining how to use a tool, maybe how to address a different technology, things like that. We don't require a write-up for that. However, there is a significant amount more detail that is required in a room that is a write-up. Next, we have the tags. So the tags here are gonna be how people find your room for or through searching. We recommend adding a couple different tags such as the operating system, the different topic you're going after. So for example, cloud or maybe cryptography, uh, 
possibly the CVE number. We do recommend that. Maybe if there's a different Prevest style. Keep in mind, once you get past four, ta or four tags, the rest of them will not be visible to people um, other than by searching for the room. So if you are concerned about maybe not giving it away something, if you're doing a challenge room, just add three tags here or four tags and then add your tags that you wanna be hidden after the fact. Next, we have our most important option here, which is the actual room icon. We'll go ahead and skip that for now. If you don't have one, the site will randomly generate one for you. So you don't really have to worry about it. I do recommend picking something nice and minimalist, or minimalistic here rather, and it'll make it your room pop out or pop and stand out. So we'll go ahead and click create room. And here we can see that we have our room ready to go. Now, this isn't quite ready, of course, for us to release. We need to do a couple more things. Specifically, we need to go through and alter the settings, and then we need to assign tasks. Additionally, we can join our room rooms uh, through going to this, and we can actually just alter this URL to JR for join room. And there we go. We've gone ahead and joined it. Let's go ahead and close that. We'll jump back here, and we can go ahead and click into our rooms here. Note we are under the manage room section again. By the way, once you finish your upload, your material will, will appear here. Uh, we can click into here. We're back in the room and you can see that we're greeted with a bunch of settings. Here we can set things such as if we want to allow people to clone our room, which is just copy it. Uh, if we want to change the difficulty, typically uh, when you're first starting with rooms, you're going to probably have this at easier medium. If we want it to be publicly accessible, which we'll get to that in just a minute, if we want it to be a simple room, don't worry too much about this option. If you take a look at rooms such as blue and compare them to rooms that uh, have a scoreboard, you'll see the difference between a simple and more complex room. Additionally, we can change if we want to, uh, it, for example, we started making a walkthrough and we decided it was going to be a challenge room or vice versa. We can change what it specifically is for the room type. Next, we can change if it's gonna be free to use. This is not important specifically for general members. This is more important for if you are working with us in our room creators program, and we end up making your room uh, a subscriber only. So typically you won't have to do anything with this. If you want your room to be locked, so for example, if you're developing your room and you don't wanna have people joining it, you can make it locked here. And then last but not least, if you want to have a public or private IP. Now, a public IP, is one that's going to be visible to the internet whenever it spawns. So you don't actually have to connect to our VPN. A private IP is not going to be visible to the internet. So your users and yourself, if you're doing your own room, you will have to connect to the TriHackMe VPN in order to do it. And then we have the scoring type here at the bottom. So we can have points in first bloods. This is great for CTF rooms, points only. So no first bloods. This is great for walkthrough rooms if you still wanna give people points. And then no points can be useful for educational rooms. Uh, or specifically if you're just walking through a topic. Next, we can see our stats. This is just general room statistics. And then here we can actually assign tasks. So this is how we actually add content to the room. Let's go ahead and click add task. And you can see that we've had our first task spawned for us. Here we can see first, we can select if we want to have material attached to this task. So this involves uh, potentially a VM, or if you have, for example, a worksheet. In this case, we're just gonna pretend that we're attaching one of the TriHackMe VMs, and here you can see there are five to pick from, from DVWA uh, to SQLI Labs or Blue, just to name a few. You can click on one of those. Once you have your material uploaded, you'll get a third option here, which will allow you to select from your material, and then it'll appear in this pop-up down here below. Next, we can change our uh, task title. This is the one important uh, section beyond the description. This is gonna tell people what they're gonna be doing specifically within that, ta or within that task. Typically for CTF type rooms, you're gonna have something like root me or something similar. Either way, you just wanna make sure that this is descriptive and is clear to your users what they're gonna be doing. Next, we have the objective. Right now, this is something that we don't really use too heavily, so I wouldn't worry about this. If you're going through and outlining the room for yourself, this can be really helpful for actually filling out what you wanna do in a task and then coming back to it later. Next, we have the actual description. This is where you can put the content. So for example, uh, research Google dorking. 
or more content specifically about the topic that you're trying to teach, or maybe some information about the CTF box that you have attached to the room. Next, we have questions, answers, and hints. So here we can see we have our first question that's been auto-generated. You do need at, one, at minimum one question. However, it doesn't require an answer per each task. Here we can see that we can adjust the question content. We can add an answer and add a hint. So we just type in here whatever we want the answer to be. And this will actually show up in uh, starred out in the actual room preview. So one star for each uh, character you have in the answer to make it easier for your users to guess the answer. Typically, this is where you're going to put your flags. So the actual content that your users are going to get for completing uh, either gaining their uh, the user access or gaining root access to your box. Additionally, we can add more questions. Note that with the adding questions, it's actually going to inherit the structure of the question before it. So if you have, for example, an answer and a hint on the previous question, or maybe none of these, your next question is going to have whatever that structure is inherited. So nice and simple. Additionally, we can delete our last question there. One thing to note before moving on to other tasks, it's important to save. Try Hack Me does not auto save the content at the time of recording. So save early, save often. Uh, clicking the save button is your friend because you click into other tasks for example, if we add another one and we start typing here and then we click back and then go back into this task, we can see that this did not save. So save early, save often. Fantastic. So next we can go into the actual design here. Here we can actually change the room code. So for example, uh, this is actually the code that people use to join your room if they want to join it from the activities page. This can be whatever you want. This will either inherit a random value based on the actual room name, or just it'll be whatever you set it to, as long as that room code has not been previously used. Here we can see this is where we would provide our official write-up. So if you're making a challenge room and you want it to be public, this is where you have to link your write-up. Note, this won't actually be visible to anyone that browses to the room. This is for room testers when they're actually uh, looking to verify your room to have it be made public. And we'll get into that just in a little bit as well. Here's if you have a form thread that's created on the Try Hack Me form for your room. This is something that I recommend, especially if you're going to make it public. It helps handle, uh, it'll help you field different questions for your room and get feedback on maybe what questions don't necessarily work and other different little things. Next, we can see this is where we can change the room icon. So you can either generate a new random icon by clicking uh, this link, or you can upload your own icon here, even if you didn't upload one or maybe you uploaded the wrong one when initially creating your room. First, you're gonna uh, click choose file here, and then you can go through and edit that as you like, and then upload new icon once you have that selected. Next, uh, let's go ahead and go to users. Here we can see that we can actually reset progress. And then if we have more users, you can actually kick the various users. So just something to be aware of. That being said, one word to warning here, if you kick a user, they can't actually get back in the room. It does ban them from the room. So just be aware of that. Here you can see that we have the clone menu. If you need to, for example, have a different room with a different format or slightly different format for a different group that you are presenting it for, um, you can go through and clone it here. Uh, this is something that's great for maybe tweaking it for one audience and then changing it for the actual public release. Here we can see the known issues. This is something that as maybe you encounter something with your room that's reported by users that you can't actually fix, you can go through and categorize issues here and just add them so that people know about them. And then last but not least, we have the delete functionality. So one thing to be aware of here, as it states, once you delete a room, you cannot recover it. So don't press this unless you really want to get rid of it. Perfect. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the process of making a room public. First thing that you'll need to do is if your room is a challenge room, you'll need to provide, as I mentioned before a couple times, you'll need to provide the actual walkthrough link or write-up link in this design tab. Make sure you click save because otherwise it won't actually save it here. And then you will be allowed to change this toggle here from false to true, uh, putting the room into the submission queue. 
Now, once your room is submitted to the submission queue, it's gonna undergo some testing by room testers. This can take a couple weeks, and once it's actually approved, it can take a little bit longer to actually stage for coming out and being public. Uh, with this, room testers are gonna evaluate your room on a variety of different concepts. So for example, making sure that you don't have too many just point uh, questions just for people to gain a bunch of points on the site or uh, making sure that your questions actually make sense or even just making sure you don't have typos in your specific questions. Your room may be rejected here. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the end for it. That just means that you should check your comments that were provided to you by the actual room creation or the room testing staff rather, and then you can go through and make changes and then click true on this again and then update it to resubmit it to the queue. Again, once you're done with all that, your uh, once your room is initially scheduled for release, you'll receive an email on whatever email you have registered with your TriHackMe account that's going to state uh, when that room is actually scheduled to be made public. Otherwise, that about does it. Let's go ahead and move into some key core concepts of room creation. All right, before we wrap up, just a couple key ideas. So the first thing is to be thorough. If you're making, for example, a walkthrough room, try to be as thorough as possible. Try to go through and evaluate your room and see if there are any things that just don't make sense. Things happen, you may not, you might understand something, but your audience might not understand it. So make sure you go through it and try to consider it from multiple angles. And even then it gets into my last item here of have someone else give it a try and take a look through it just to, just to see if there's something that might make sense to you since you wrote it, but might not make sense to everyone else. Next, go through and test it please test your rooms. Uh, you want to make sure that it still works. Sometimes things get uploaded and they don't work as planned. So just go through and test it to make sure that everything is still as you would expect it. Next, don't be afraid to fail. Room creation, it can be difficult at first, but it's still incredibly rewarding. This is something that, again, even if your room is rejected, we will work with you to get it accepted. Just make sure that you take a look at that feedback and the comments that are provided. Next, start simple. So go through, you can make something simple, maybe a simple room on just a tool, just explaining how you use it. Maybe your best practices, maybe walking through a different kind of cryptography. Think of something that you're passionate about or may, you might know a lot about, and then you can go through and talk about it. It doesn't necessarily have to be strictly hacking. We do encourage it to be more of a security focus, but it's something that you have a fair amount of freedom there. And then again, as I mentioned, uh, have someone else give it a try just to make sure that it's been proofread with different eyes. And then last but not least, make sure you have fun with room creation. It's a very rewarding experience. And especially when you see your first room go public, it's, it's pretty magical. Otherwise, that's about going to do it here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask on the Try Hack Me Discord. Otherwise, I have my Discord as well linked in the description, along with a couple other useful documents. Otherwise, again, have, a, have fun with it and uh, give it a go.